So uh, let's see. So here's the, the first thing is I've posted all three videos to our Canvas modules. So if you scroll down in Canvas, you'll see Air Collision 1, Air Collision 2, Air Collision 3. These are actual metal cards. Um, they are, I modified one of them by putting a little metal bracket on it. Um, these videos, you've looked at one of them already. This is the one that I'm going to go with because um, some of you, it, it doesn't matter uh, which one we start with. I, I want, I think maybe it'll be a little bit familiar if you see some numbers that you recognize. When you open the video in YouTube, um, one of the first things you're going to need to do is skip the ads. And then the second thing that you're going to need to do is um, make sure that the quality is set to at least 720. If it's less than 720, then as you do the work, it's going to like skip around and be really weird. So mine is set to 1080. That's the highest quality. The computers in the lab should all be able to run at 1080 as well. So. Um, so uh, when you, or actually I'm not going to make this large. So then when you play the video, it, those of you who were here when we did this at the end of first semester probably remember, when you play the video, what you see is a little countdown and then kaboom, they bonk into each other. And what I told you is that because we know how long it takes each frame on this video and the um, video has a track with distances in it, we can find how far each cart went, and we can calculate how fast it was going. We're going to assume that the things are moving at a constant speed. Um, so, um, so what I showed you the other day is um, listed in the assignment. All the instructions are here. It tells you that um, each frame is a 30th of a second. It tells you that the tick marks are one centimeter apart. It tells us that we can find velocity by doing a calculation. I'm also going to show you everything right now. And this video will be posted to Canvas so that if you forget, you can watch the video. Ideally, what's going to happen is when you get back to the computer lab, you'll either be able to use your memory, your notes, or the video to get the same kind of information that I'm about to show you. If you have questions as I'm going, please ask, because if there's something you don't understand, then, um, then, then I can explain it to you while we're sitting right here. So, um, so the way that we're going to do this is um, the greater than and less than keys, which, which are the comma and the period keys on your keyboard, we can use those to move through this video frame by frame. And um, so we can move in slow motion effectively and count how many clicks. So um, if we look at um, what's happening with these cards, there's this initial time period where there's the hands are on them and the carts are being pushed. We're not interested in that time period because they're not moving with a constant speed. There's also an instant in time when they're bonking into each other and their speed is changing. But before they bonk into each other and after they bonk into each other, they're moving at about a constant speed. To figure out how fast they're going, we need to make two measurements from the video. The first is how far the cart goes, and the second is how many clicks it takes to go that distance. So for me, it's easiest if I get the cart lined up with one of these numbers so that I can see it. Um, and it, that may or may not be possible for all of them, but that's pretty close. It's right about on the 30, right here. So I can look at this 30, and I can say, OK, I want to know in, say, say 10 clicks, how far does it go? So I'm going to count 10 clicks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And it ended up, this is 44. So to do the calculation for distance, figure out how far apart 
30 and 44 are. My distance is, it started at 30, it went to 44, so that is a distance of 14. And the little ticks are centimeters. You don't necessarily need to know that, but for some of you that's easier to think about. And then the number of clicks was 10. And if you look at the assignment, it tells you to find velocity, multiply the distance each car travels by 30, then divide by the number of clicks. So it went 20. to find the velocity, I need to know that it went 14 centimeters, multiply that by 30, and then I divide that by 10. So I can just use a calculator to do that. 14 times 30 divided by 10 is about 42. And for those of you who like to know this kind of thing, that's centimeters per second. Okay. So that, we have to kind of keep track of this stuff. If you're keeping track by using um, the assignment itself, that is this information right here, the velocity of the first card before they bonk into each other. If you're using a separate sheet of paper, like I am, I'm gonna write that down so that I can remember it. This is the first card before the collision. And this is all for the first video. I'm going to do one more so you can see. The next question in the assignment is, what's the velocity of the second cart before the collision? So this is going to be a little tricky, not super terribly tricky, but just a little tricky. So I'm going to go back in time a little bit so that I can um, get a good count. And it's hard for you to see this, um, so um, I'm going to try to get it at a good spot. That's a pretty good spot right there. That is, um, that is 90. It's right on 90 here, okay? This one is right on 90. So I'm gonna do 10 clicks again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And now it's at 65. So it went from 90, went from 90 to 65. And here's something that's kind of interesting about this. Remember that when we work with velocity, direction matters. Caden and Dee, make sure you're listening to this. D direction matters. And remember, we had a trick for direction, which is things that are moving to the left, we'll put a negative sign in front of it. So this distance is 25 centimeters, but the direction was negative. So this is actually negative 25 centimeters as it was going to the left. The number of clicks was 10. Again, you don't have to do 10. I just, 10 is an easy number for me to remember, so you won't always be able to do 10 because sometimes it might collide or there might not be 10 clicks in between when the person's hand legs go and it hits the cart. But in this case, I was able to get 10 clicks without anything touching it. And then, um, so the velocity is going to be the distance, which is negative 25, times 30, divided by the number of clicks. So 25 times 30 divided by 10 is about 75. And this is negative. So negative 25 times 30 divided by 10 is negative 75 centimeters per second. And this is the second cart before the collision. Mm -hmm. 
What we'd like you to be able to do is, using a YouTube video, find the velocities of things on an air track. You need to know whether they're going positive or the negative direction. You need to be able to subtract locations to find how far they go. You need to count clicks to find how long it takes. You need to be able to do the math to come up with a number. When you do this for your own air carts, like I, I won't necessarily have the videos that you're going to be using, so it would be hard for me to check your work. So one of the reasons that we want you to do some practice today is because if you get to the point where you are routinely getting the right information for these things, then we know that if you find a velocity for your personally built air car on the air track, that it's probably right. So we're looking for accuracy here, and, and part of that is getting a little bit of practice. Yeah? Um, isn't it more accurate to just do one click? No, that's a great question. So um, the reason that it's more accurate to, um, to use more clicks is because our track has the measurements in centimeters, which means that at any one time, it's probably not going to be right on a line, which means we're guessing. The farther it goes, the less that guessing matters. Okay, if something moves 100 centimeters, and we measure 99 or 98 or 101 or 102, we're not off by a lot. But if something moves one centimeter and we're off by half a centimeter, then we're going to underestimate or overestimate our velocity by somewhere around a factor of two. So that's a lot. If you want to know how fast something is going, let it go for a while. You get much more precise information when you do that. It's a great question, though. And, so, and there are some times when you know, less data is more accurate. In this case, the carts are moving at almost a constant velocity. So the more data we have, the better off you'll be. Yeah? If we weren't guessing though, where, exactly where it was, wouldn't it be better? Like if you had a, like a display that was constantly showing like, uh, where it was on the track? Theoretically, it wouldn't make any difference. If we had really good measurements, of time and position, it wouldn't make any difference if it were moving at a constant velocity. One click would be the same speed as 10 clicks. Yeah. It wouldn't matter. Yeah. Okay, okay so, um, so this part of the assignment um, involves making up to 12 calculations. I don't think everybody's going to get there. Some of you are just going to crank through this and you'll be able to get it done in 20 or 30 minutes and that's great. Some of you are going to um, need some extra time and maybe you'll only get part way through the second collision and that's fine. You don't need to get all the way through all of them. The more practice you get, the better. Um, the assignment itself, we're going to wrap it up on Wednesday of next week, which means you don't have to turn something in today for points. If you're somebody who keeps track of their stuff, you can keep all your work and just, just make sure that you have it with you on Wednesday. But if you sometimes forget things or lose things, then um, when, you're, when, you, when, when I call a halt and we start moving to shop stuff, then make sure that you put your work into the inbox so that we can, we can guard it for you and get it back to you on Wednesday. All right, so, um, so we're, we'll head back to the other room in just a second. Your goal, your big goal, is to get as many calculations of velocity as you can in a reasonable amount of time. Each cart has two velocities in each video. So there's four velocities per video. This cart's initial velocity, this cart's initial velocity, this cart's final velocity, and this cart's final velocity. Okay. So those are, those are the parameters. You should all get through at least the first video, especially since I just did the initial velocity of both carts for you. This is the initial velocity of the left-hand cart. This is the initial velocity of the right-hand cart. So after the video, or sorry, um, you only have two more velocities to look at that relate to um, after the collision. All right, does anybody have any questions? Okay, we'll work on this for a not unreasonable amount of time.
and then we'll um, shift and we'll start doing some work on your personal air cards. All right, see you over there. I'm going to post the video real quick.